the CASE survey. CASE is an acronym for Career Aspirations, Career Expectations. And I'll get back to those two items in a minute. But first, this is a survey that I designed for administration to large groups. And when I say large, I mean 400 or more. So that lets you know that if it can be administered with relative ease to a group that large, that the classroom setting would probably be ideal for use of this document. It is, in fact, a one-page document. When you go to one page, you lower the chance that students will become daunted or just bored or not fill out the, the document. So I tried to keep the case survey to one page. There are all kinds of questions on there, um, like grade, age, uh, grade point average, gender, ethnicity. And you want to include questions like that, or at least I did for this particular survey, was because I needed that information in other areas to plan other ways for the students who were actually com completing the surveys. So you can ask all of those kinds of questions and then get down to the two most important questions in the case survey, the questions that ac actually give the, the survey its name. The career aspirations. In this question, you are asking students, what would you like to be when you grow up? If there were absolutely no barriers, no challenges, the sky's the limit, you can do whatever you want to do. So you're asking and allowing, giving your students permission to dream with that question. And then the second question, career expectations, the second part of case, you're bringing a little bit of reality in to the student. You're saying to them, I, I hear what you're saying about your aspirations, no barriers, but you need to think ahead. What if there are barriers? What if there are challenges? What career would you like to pursue if you couldn't pursue the one that you just named in the previous question? Again, career aspirations, career expectations, students, are beginning to see what it's like to make a plan and then to make a backup plan. So that's what the career aspirations, career expectations survey allows the students to do in, again, one page. You have now heard about the case survey and its potential usefulness. Next, Dr. Lockridge will speak of its ease of administration and interpretation. I've already told you about the most important questions on the survey. Now I want to talk to you for a minute or two about the actual administration of the instrument. You can train parents, volunteers, um, co-workers, uh, fellow teachers to administer the case survey. It's fairly simple and fairly straightforward. When you are do conducting the training, you actually are practicing for the administration. Hand out the surveys, go over each of the questions, and check for questions uh, among the trainees in this case, but later for among the students who are taking it. Once you have um, provided training for the test or the survey uh, with the parents or volunteers or whatever group you're using to administer it, then you give the actual survey to the students. Be sure to point out those last two questions and make sure that the students understand the difference in career aspirations, what do you want to be when you grow up if there are no barriers, and career expectations, if you do encounter barriers, what career would you like to pursue? Strategically placing those two most important questions at the bottom of the survey makes interpreting and sorting the surveys as straightforward and as simple as the administration of the survey. Because the question about aspirations and the question about expectations are at the bottom, you can just visually look at each survey and sort them accordingly. Again, because this is a one-page document, that has the critical information that you will need to help your students pursue various careers. This one-page document 
can take the place of much more complex and comprehensive kinds of surveys. One of the other powerful features of the case survey is the extent to which you, as the user, can customize it to suit your specific needs. Here's Dr. Lockridge. Earlier I told you that I designed the case survey. And when I did that, I did it with the information in mind that I needed to have from the students. Of course, the critical questions were the aspirations and expectations that those students were having. But I also needed some information about the courses that they were taking, what kinds of grades they were making. You can use those kinds of information or that kind of information for curriculum design, for out laying out courses, for looking at what students might be interested in as you plan for future curriculum changes or modifications. So keep in mind that a case survey that I have, as I have described it, is very, cust uh, you can customize it as much as you want to. You can add questions, you can take out questions. For instance, if you are asking about gender and, or if the survey that, that you're building from asks the gender question, and that is not relevant to what you are using the information for, just leave that one off. You might put in another question about favorite courses or grade point average. That way you can have some insight into the courses that the students are currently taking as they relate to those two most important questions. If a student says, for instance, that they are interested in becoming a physician, that's their career aspiration, and they have indicated that they either are not taking any science courses or that their grade point average in that particular course is, is below average, then that's a red flag. That shows an inconsistency and incongruence between coursework and aspirations. And you'll need, that will give you talking points for your discussions with those students. So keep in mind that the questions are designed by you you being the teacher, the counselor, the volunteer, or even the parent who wants to find out more about the interest of the career interest of their child. But make it give you the information that you need for your purposes to help the student in career development. Another advantage of using the case survey is that it can be modified for use with students who have special needs. Specifically, those modifications could include administering it orally, uh, having someone help the student use it. The student could take the survey home to allow more time and for their parents to have um, the opportunity to assist them with completing the survey. You can use a larger font. You could use it on the computer. There are various ways to modify that survey so that when you get the results, those results can be used to develop the IEP for a student who has special needs.